I would like to show you a microeconomic model of public goods. And of course, we know public goods are non-rival and non-excludable. Classic examples are military protection. And the example I'm going to use is asteroid protection, which is non-rival because me enjoying protection from asteroids does not impact your ability to enjoy the protection from asteroids. I don't use up that protection. And it's non-excludable because you can't exclude anyone from protection of the asteroids, even if they didn't contribute. So what does this look like in a model? Well, basically, here we have the person deciding how much money do you contribute to the cause of asteroid protection, where the total amount of protection that we have from asteroids depends on the total contributions of everybody's money contributed, which is, of course, a function of your personal contribution. Here we have the total contributions is just adding up everybody's personal decision about how much to contribute. That's the benefit. The cost is simply the money you contribute. Very simple model. And of course, the problem here is the drop in the bucket problem, which I will represent using calculus. The drop in the bucket problem is basically the elasticity of asteroid protection with respect to your personal contribution is about equal to zero. So the marginal benefit of your contribution is super, super low. Yet the cost is actually a dollar cost to you or a $10 cost to you. That's actually painful to you. So the result is that people don't contribute or they way under contribute to the cause of asteroid protection. That's the public goods problem. This is how you model it. And of course you can start with this model and build on it to figure out how do you solve this. And let me show you a couple of different solutions because you basically solve this by adding some kind of cost or benefit over here that's going to change people's decision. So I've added this other term, which is actually a benefit, and it's a benefit, of course, if it pulls contributions up. Like the benefit of contributing more is that you don't go to jail. This elasticity is negative. The elasticity of jail with respect to your personal contribution is negative. So this is basically a tax where minus jail time you would have to go through if you didn't pay your contribution, that's going to get people's contributions up. And it does that by adding this other benefit to your equation. Now that's the government forced version. What if you can't get the government to uh, force people to contribute through taxes to a specific cause? Are there any other mechanisms that could be used to change this equation? Well, there actually are. So if you have a social setting where everybody puts enough pressure on each other, then contributing reduces the guilt you feel based on your friend's pressure for you to contribute. So this is another classic solution to the public goods problem is sort of social expectations or social pressure where the new benefit of contributing is that it reduces the guilt you feel that your friends make you feel for not contributing to their cause. So that's just two solutions. It's not the only two solutions in existence, but this is the way you set up this problem. Oh, and let me show you one more thing. So in public goods situations, you have a cost to the individual where the benefit is a collective benefit to the group where there's a drop in the bucket problem. That's public goods. You often learn about public goods at the same time you learn about tragedy of the commons because for tragedy of the commons, these are flipped. Basically, you have a benefit to the individual and a cost that's collective to the group where there's a drop in the bucket problem. That's how those two concepts relate. So super useful framework. You'll see it all over the place once you start to recognize it. And you can always build it into a model with a framework somewhat like this.